that's that we're going to look at making incredibly simple yet yeah, absolutely amazing roast potatoes. Going to be beautiful. My name is Steve. This is my kitchen. Welcome. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need, hopefully comes as no surprise, potatoes. I like Maris Pipers, but you should use whatever your favourite is. I like the Maris Pipers because they're a good floury potato. If you not use a nice floury potato, that's where you get that crunch from on the outside. So, just peel them quick. You guys know how to do that. I'm not going to make you watch me peel up all these potatoes. And there we go, as if by magic, potatoes peeled. Now for the chopping. Get yourself a good knife. I like this, nice Santuku blade. These blades are really versatile. My sister-in-law actually bought me this knife, it's beautiful. Cut your potatoes up. Now the most important thing at this point is to make sure you cut your potatoes into good, even sized pieces. You want these to be as uniform as possible. Let's get them chopped up, get them chucked into a saucepan. Now I was lucky today, most of my potatoes were pretty much the same size. So I can just quarter mine up and get them in the pan. But it might be you've got some that are much bigger and need to be cut down a lot smaller, or you've got some really little ones that need to be in half. Well, you can even do this with uh, new potatoes. Leave them whole, peel them, and get them in. They come out beautifully. So there we go. Potatoes in a pan. A little bit of salt. This is about two tablespoons of table salt. Nothing special about it at all. Chuck that in with them. And then you want to fill this pan up with cold water. You want to get all of the potatoes submerged. As you can see, there's a nice size pan here. It's not too big. Potatoes have got a little bit of room to move. But equally, I don't need to warm up the entire house for it. So there we go. Pan of potatoes in water, two tablespoons of salt, and they're ready to get cooking. All right, let's get these bad boys on the heat. That's a good do. Turn our burner on. I have a gas stove. This is my favourite burner, back right. Is that weird? I've got a favourite burner? Does everyone have a favourite burner? Maybe it's just me. Anyway, pick your favourite. Get your potatoes on. Get a lid on them. And leave them for about 10 minutes or so until they're boiling. Okay, now these have been boiling away for about 10 minutes. Let's see how they're getting on. Pop the lid off. Get yourself a sharp knife. Find a potato, stab it. There's still a little bit of firmness in the middle, but it just falls away like that. They are done. Get them off the heat, get them into a colander, and let them drain. So here we go. Straight into the colander like that. Whoa, look at that tower of steam. Is it where you want flowery ones? You can see little bits on there. They're already starting to fluff up around the edges. Now you've got them in your colander, put them down, leave them alone. You want to leave these alone for at least 20 minutes, if not longer. I plan on leaving these for a good couple of hours now. Give yourself time, sort out your other vegetables, get your meat on, do whatever else it is you're doing today. Okay, welcome back. Let's look at these potatoes. Since we've drained them, about three and a half hours has passed and all these guys have done is hung out in this colander drying out getting fluffy look at that that's just sat there in this colander these are the bits around the edge of your potato that are going to go all nice and crispy that's what you're looking for but the middle is going to stay nice and fluffy so now all we have to do is get them onto a tray so Good old trusty non-stick baking tray. And you put them curvy side down. Where we cut these into quarters, they've got a couple of flat edges and the round edge that was the outside of the potato. So 
get them curvy side down. You want to make sure they're spaced out, otherwise they're in danger of steaming and just turn into mash on your tray, which isn't very appealing. You want these to roast nicely. If you've done a lot of potatoes, use two trays. I should be able to fit them all on here if I be careful about it. Actually use the whole tray. Go. Always like to make sure that I do enough roast potatoes whenever I'm cooking these because myself and my kids absolutely love them. My wife is a fan, she tries to behave herself. So there we go. Once they're on, what I like to use is sunflower oil. Generic, nothing special, not expensive, sunflower oil. That's all it is. This costs like one pound per bottle from the supermarket and you just drizzle it across the top of all the potatoes. Make sure you hit them all up, but don't soak them. You don't want them swimming in oil. They're not being deep fat fried. They're roasting. They just need bit of love over the top to help them on their way and I found over the years sunflower oil gives you that wonderful crispy texture that wonderful wonderful pop what are you looking for for me olive oil and butter just don't do the same thing sunflower oil make sure you hit up all the potatoes there will be a bit of oil start pulling in the bottom of your pan. Don't worry too much about it, because when they come out, take them off the tray and get rid of it. So there we go. My oven is preheated to 240 Celsius, which is about uh, 465 Fahrenheit. So it's a hot oven. You get them in that hot oven for about 20 minutes. And then turn it down to 180 Celsius, uh, which is about 365 Fahrenheit, I think. Uh, and then let them roast for another 35 minutes from that point on. Okay, here we go. Let's get these into the oven. So like I say, these are going in. The oven is preheated, 240 Celsius which is 465 Fahrenheit. I can confirm it is a hot, hot oven. And they've gone in quite near the top as you saw. So they're gonna be in there for around 20 minutes at that temperature. And then we're gonna lower it down to 180 Celsius, 355 Fahrenheit for about another 35 minutes. They're gonna come out crispy, golden, beautiful highlight of any dinner okay now these have got about 10 minutes left and one thing I like to do for the last few minutes is just to get them and where we put them round side down I like to make sure they're not stuck and turn them over now these look like they're all gonna turn nicely so I'm gonna get in there with my fingers because I want to try and get them back into the oven as quickly as possible if you do decide to do this with your fingers, please be careful. I can assure you they are hot. And despite the fact I'm just getting on with it, I can feel this through my fingers. As you can see, these are coming up beautifully crispy. A lovely crunch. Golden brown. And I'm excited. So just flip them all over, get them back in the oven for that last 10 minutes just to finish off. And here we go, out of the oven for the final time. Look how golden and crispy 
they have become. I don't know if you can hear that sizzling, but that's how hot these are. So let's get them out of that oil. Like I said, there was going to be some pulled in the bottom. But you don't need all that negativity in your life. Get yourself a slice. Scoop them out. And let it go. These things look and smell incredible. And I can already feel on the outside of them just how crunchy they are. Now as they say, the proof of the pudding is in the tasting. And I'm not going to eat one of these because I would burn my face. But Look at that, crunchy on the outside, fluffy in the middle. Beautiful roast potatoes. Yum, yum. Well, I really hope you like what you've seen here today. If you do, please give this video a like. That would really help me out right now. Uh, if you want to see more of what I've done, subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to hit that, hit that bell so you get the uh, notifications as soon as I post something new. Thanks for watching.